أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وإمامنا وقدوتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear brothers and sisters uh, Welcome to another evening in Ramadan uh, An evening of short talks In the past two nights I spoke to you about Nuh السلام, in which the father was a believer and the son was a non-believer and I spoke to you about Ibrahim السلام, in which the son was a believer and the father or his uncle was a non-believer. So we have a situation where that's the reverse. In the first situation the father is a believer and the son is not. In the second situation the son is the believer and the father is not. Today I want to share with you a different kind of story in which both the father and the son are believers. And it's such a beautiful interaction. And it's really a model for us Muslims that we should follow. Now this is not a prophet. This is an honorable man, but he is so honorable that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned him in the Quran. And in fact, an entire surah was named after him. So when that happens, we have to pay attention because this person is important. So I want to share with you today the story of Luqman and his interaction with his son. It is a beautiful story and it is a long story, but I'm going to make it short. It's Luqman was a believer and his son also was a believer. But Luqman begins teaching his son about the basics of faith. And it's such a beautiful interaction because not only does he teach him how to, to, to relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he also teaches him how to relate to his parents and how to relate to other people in the world. And he teaches him good behaviors, all in a few ayat, which I'm going to read to you today. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and ba'di a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِ اشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حملته أمه وهنا على وهن وفصاله في عامين أن اشكر لي ولوالديك إلي المصير وإن جاهدك على أن تشرك بما ليس لك به علم فلا تطعهما وصاحبهما في الدنيا معروفا واتبع سبيل من آب إلي ثم إلي مرجعكم فأنبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا بني إنها إن تكم إثقال حبة من خردل فتكم في صخرة أو في السماوات أو في الأرض يأتي بها الله إن الله لطيف خبير يا بني أقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك إن ذلك من عزم الأمور ولا تصعر خدك للناس ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فقور واقصد في مشيك وغضض من صوتك إن أنكر الأصوات لصوت الحمير. And we endow Luqman with wisdom. Give thanks to Allah. Whoever is appreciative is appreciative for his own benefit. And whoever is unappreciative, Allah is sufficient and praiseworthy. And when Luqman told his son while he was giving him advice, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about Luqman sitting down with his son and giving him advice. This should happen in every Muslim household. We should be sitting down with our children and giving them advice. That's our job as parents. We shouldn't just be silent, just let things go, whatever happens, happens, because they are going to seek advice. And if it's not from you, it's going to be from someone else. If it's not from you, it's going to be from their friends at school. If it's not from you, it's going to be from their teachers at school. If it's not from you, it's going to be from the neighbor. It's going to be from somewhere else. So make sure you make the time to sit down with your children and give them advice. That's what Luqman did. When Luqman said to his son and he advised him, Oh my son, 
do not associate anything with Allah, idolatry is a terrible wrong. So that's the first thing. He teaches him the foundations of faith. He says, you must worship Allah alone. You cannot associate anything with Allah in worship. And if you do that, it is a terrible wrong. It's a big deal. This is the worst thing you could do. Then the ayat shift. So in the first ayat, Allah is telling us, Luqman is telling his son. Then he doesn't say anything about Luqman. Allah directly gives the order. He says, وَوَصَّيْنَا Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave advice. Allah gives advice to the human being. We've entrusted the human being with the care of his parents. This is so vital and important. And again, it makes sense. You know, Luqman is not going to tell his son, oh, make sure you're good to your parents. No. Allah is telling the children, be good to your parents. For those of you children listening to me today, remember, this is not Luqman telling his son, this is Allah telling all human beings. Muslim, non-Muslim, doesn't matter. Allah is telling all human beings, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ And we've advised human beings to be good to their parents. And he reminds us, his mother carried him through hardship upon hardship. Don't think pregnancy is easy. It's tough. Weaning him in two years. And then after pregnancy, there is breastfeeding. So give thanks to me and to your parents. To me is the final destination. Allah is saying, give thanks to Allah and give thanks to your parents. SubhanAllah. In the previous ayah, remember Allah said, whoever is appreciative, is appreciative for the benefit of his own soul. Here Allah says, be appreciative of, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be appreciative to your parents. But then Allah reminds us, just the way Luqman told his son, worship only one God and don't associate anyone with him. He says, but if they, meaning the parents, strive to have you associate with me something of which you have no knowledge, do not obey them. So if your parents tell you the reverse of what Luqman told his son, Luqman told his son, worship Allah and don't associate anyone with Allah. If your parents strive for you to associate someone with Allah, to do the reverse of that, what are you to do? Do not obey them. That's the only circumstance in which you cannot obey your parents. Do not obey them. But keep them company in this life. So still you have to be good to them. You still have to talk to them. In kindness. Allah is saying, you only have to associate with them, you have to be kind to them and follow the path of him who turns to me. Then to me is your return and I will inform you of what you used to do. Allah is reminding us that he's watching us. This ayah was revealed when one of the Sahaba, his mother told him, when he revealed to her that he accepted Islam, that she's going to stop eating and drinking and sleeping until he reverts back to the religion of the parents, idol worshipping. So Allah revealed this ayah. If they strive to make you associate anyone with Allah, then you are not to obey them. But you still are to talk to them and be company with them and be kind to them and follow the path of him who turns to me. Then to me is your return and I will inform you of what you used to do. Then Allah goes back to the conversation between Luqman and his son. He says, O oh my son, Ya Bunayya, even if it were the weight of a mustard seed, mustard seed is really tiny, in a rock. So it's not just the weight of a seed, it's hidden inside a rock. Or in the heavens. So imagine inside a rock, all the way to the heavens. Or in the earth, in the depths of the earth. Allah will bring it to light. Allah is kind and expert. So he's setting the stage to his son. He's telling his son, look, whatever you do, Allah will know about it. Don't think you can hide in Allah. You can't hide in a rock. You can't go up to the sky and hide. You can't go to the depths of the earth and hide. Allah can bring anything to light. So he's giving him beautiful advice. And then after he tells him that and sets the stage, believe in Allah and don't worship anyone with him. And then he tells him that Allah is aware of everything that's happening. Then he tells him what he needs to do. Because now, it's not just a matter of believing in your heart. You actually have to have actions that validate that belief. He says, Ya Bunay, O my son, perform the prayer. Advocate for righteousness and forbid evil. And be patient over what has befallen you. These are the most honorable of traits. So he's telling his son, 
perform a salah. Always maintain that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then you have to deal with other people too. You have to go around and deal with people and enjoin what is good, forbid what is evil. And when you start telling people what's good and what's bad, some of them will hate you and some of them will fight you. So he tells his son, and be patient for whatever afflicts you. And then he tells him, these are the most honorable of traits. Then he gives him personal advice of behavior. And do not treat people with arrogance, nor walk proudly on earth. Allah does not love arrogant show-offs. He's telling him, don't be, be humble. Don't be arrogant. And then he goes on, and moderate your stride. Don't walk like you own the world. No, walk like a regular human being and lower your voice. Don't scream and yell like you're the president and you're in charge and giving orders all over. No, that's not who we are as Muslims. The most repulsive of voices is that of the donkey. So he's telling him, when you start yelling and screaming and raising this as if you're, you're a donkey and, and the donkey's voice is very disturbing. Nobody likes to hear a donkey. That's how people perceive those who yell all the time, who scream all the time, who raise their voice all the time, who are giving orders and commands all the time. So he's advising his son to avoid that kind of despicable behavior. Subhanallah, life advice in one page in the Quran, one page from beginning to end, the whole thing. Beautiful advice, how to deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to deal with people around you, how to, to know that there are afflictions that will come to you and how to be patient with those afflictions and how to be kind and respectful to others and how to be humble and how not to raise your voice or be boastful but to be a kind, loving, caring human being, a human being who's humble towards others. Beautiful advice from a son, from a father to his son, both of whom are believers. Allah gives us a whole array of examples. The examples of Nuh and his non-believing son. The example of Ibrahim and his non-believing parent. And the example of two parents, uh, parent and son, both of who are believers. Advice that we as Muslims should learn from. Number one, we should give this advice to our children. But number two, we should live this advice. Perhaps more powerful than sitting down and talking to your son and or your daughter is for them to see you live these traits. When they see you live these traits, they know it's serious and real. Not only that, but they know it's possible. It's not some ideal that's out there written in a book. No, it's a real life practical matter that they can achieve as well. And when they see that it's possible and that you're doing it, perhaps Allah will guide them to be like you and to follow your path. Wa alaykum